Hey everybody, I'm Nathaniel Dodson from tutvid.com. Welcome right into this Photoshop tutorial where today we're going to talk about using channels to make selections. It's kind of an old school way to create and, and make selections, but it still is pretty effective for a lot of different things. So I'm going to show you a couple ways that I think are cool to use channels to make selections in this tutorial. And if you do enjoy this tutorial, we'll go ahead and make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel, turn those notifications on so you never miss another Photoshop tutorial in the past, present, or especially future. With that out of the way, Let's jump into Photoshop and check this thing out. All right, so once more, we find ourselves here in Photoshop, and we've got a 1 million uh, celebration, not because I've hit 1 million subscribers. Maybe that'll be later this year. Maybe not. We'll see what happens with regard to that. But this is just, I thought it was a cool graphic. So, hey, who can resist? But the point is, I, I want to go ahead and change the color of this. Now, you may be thinking, eh, look, it's on a white background. Go ahead and use hue saturation and shift the colors, and you can get whatever you want. Well, there's a more interesting way to do this, and it gives you a little bit more control. Albeit, it's not quite as fast as that, and it's by using channels. You want to open up your channels panel. Now, part of the cool thing about channels is, in your typical RGB image, like we have here, you, of course, have an, a red, green, and blue channel. Now, if this was CMYK, you'd have cyan, magenta, yellow, black channels. Uh, LAB, you've got your LA and B. You can really do this with any set of channels. All I look for is the, the max contrast. I almost said majority contrast, but that doesn't make sense. The max contrast. And I've got that here on my green channel. So this is what I'm going to use. I am going to drag this down to the new channel icon to duplicate the green channel. Now, I haven't damaged the original image. In fact, if I turn my original image on, I just get this bizarro pink overlay. And that's because this new alpha channel is just that. It's an alpha channel. It's not carrying all that color information. It's more or less, um, you can think of it as just a really fancy mask slash selection, but it's not really selecting or masking anything. It just is going to allow us to grab that selection anytime we want. It's like a save selection. So if I turn that on, I get this red ruby overlay, which is what you would normally see in something like quick mask mode, of course. We're going to shut off our RGB composite channel and just work with this new channel, though. Let's not make things too complicated, shall we? And then I'm going to go image adjustments levels. Now here in levels, the key is just going to be achieve maximum contrast, solid white and solid black. So I'm going to crank the black point up and keep pulling it up until those highlights disappear. But the one thing you want to watch is you want to watch your edges. You don't want the edges of whatever you're trying to select to start appearing too crunchy. All right, and then I'll boost white a little bit. Well, I probably don't need to boost white much at all. Maybe make black a little bit more solid by dragging that midpoint over. Now, of course, 1M is, is not solid black, but check this out. Check out, check out how easy this is. Now that we have everything solid white and everything solid black except that. We can do something like grab the lasso tool and just go ahead and loop de do a selection right around this just like that. And we can fill it with black. So just swap our foreground background color and then use the hotkey option delete on the windows. That would be alt backspace and then command or control D to deselect. Now, of course, we have this black and white outline of our artwork. Great, right? Well, not yet, because as of right now, if I command or control click on the thumbnail for this channel, all of the white stuff gets loaded as a selection. I'm going to go select, deselect. I don't want the white, or I, I, I don't want the, the background to be selected. I, I do want the white stuff to be selected. So we need to just inverse this, or invert, I should say, invert this channel by hitting Command or Control I. Now the background is black, but all the heart graphic-y stuff is white. So if I turn on my RGB composite layer, you can see all the pink unselectedness is all over the background, and we have our artwork isolated beautifully in the center. I can actually shut this green copy channel off and make sure you actually select your RGB composite channel again so you can work on the image. Now what we're going to do is just command or control click on this channel to load the selection. You can see all that stuff is now selected, and we can go layers. And we'll first of all go with the hue saturation adjustment layer. And you're thinking, ah, we just did this. What are you doing? Well, hang with me here. We're going to bump it over to like 180. We'll dump some of the saturation a little bit and maybe even dump a little brightness. I'll go like negative five in the brightness department. Now what we can do is just add a color balance adjustment layer. And here's where this added control is going to help us. I can just hold down alter option, click and drag and copy that mask up to my color balance layer, open up color balance. And here in the mid tones, I'm going to go like a negative 25 to push a little bit more cyan into there. I'm not going to change the the green at all and then I'm going to boost some blue into there so I'll go like plus 35 then I think we'll come up here to the chat uh, the shadows excuse me and I'm going to go like negative 25 to add a little bit more cyan to the shadows I'll go negative 35 to push some more purpley magenta-ness into the shadows and then we'll push even more blue into the shadows but yeah push that up to like 20 and then down here in the highlights last but not least we're all just I don't know add some cyan until it looks good right around negative 20 I think is going to look good and maybe even a little yellow yeah let's go like negative 
Now we'll go like negative 10 or so on the yellow. So you can see color balance adjustment made a huge difference. And we were able to get a really, really targeted color balance. And by the way, if I shift click the mask, we can see what it looks like with that turned off. So we're not adding that sort of like slight milkiness to our background. We just get a very nice control very, very quickly by selecting all this stuff incredibly easily, by the way, with the channels. So that's the first just sort of preliminary walkthrough on how to create a very basic selection, despite the fact this would be kind of a complex selection if you were to try to select it with the pen tool or with a bunch of ellipses or whatever you were going to do. We can grab it really, really easily with a channel. This goes for pretty much anything over a solid color background. It just makes it so fast and easy to go in and grab. Really helpful if you're doing product photography. So the next thing I want to talk about is this little composite image we're going to throw together. We have this girl. We want to move her out and put her in the basket of this hot air balloon and then um, just you know make sure it's all masked together and looks proper. We're going to be able to get the bulk of this selection with uh, a channel, both the basket as well as her. But we are going to have to tweak a little bit with the brush. And this is where I think this is uh, both cool and important for you to know because not every selection is going to be just, you know, shooting fish in a barrel like the one million heart graphic. Sometimes you're going to have to go in and just tweak and adjust a little bit. And that's exactly what we're going to have to do here with her. So I'm going to go channels. And the first thing I'm going to do again is just look for contrast. So here she's very light against a relatively dark background, but I'm concerned with the color of her luggage being close to the color of the background and also with the color of her shoes. So I'm going to come down here to green. Green. This is great contrast across the board. And then blue. Now blue is also great contrast. And here's where we have to make a value judgment. Is it more important that she has darker skin against that same sort of lightish background and slightly darker shoes? Or would it be more helpful to have her suitcase and her clothing a little bit darker? I think it'd be more helpful to have the suitcase and clothing a little darker. We can always work on her skin and the shoes uh, later on. So I'm going to once more use the green channel. I'm going to duplicate that. And we're going to, again, open up levels by hitting Command or Control L. And here's where we kind of have to walk. We got a little bit of a dance with the devil. So I'm going to pull that black point over. I'm going to push the white point over. Again, I'm just trying to make sure that we don't make our edges too crunchy. We don't want to lose that detail and a little bit of hair that she has sticking out of her hat. Stuff like that. So we're going to get this kind of as close as we can. And then we'll go ahead and we'll tweak and adjust this in a moment. And you can see here we've got kind of the shadow being cast back here. I'll show you how to tackle that in just a moment. And let's maybe push this up a little bit brighter. I'm just watching. I want to make sure we don't lose detail up here in her hat or along her jawline. Right, her skin has still got good contrast. The shoes have decent contrast. I think we'll be good there with levels. And now what we do is we go in and try to make her basically appear solid black. And then we'll just invert the channel like we did before. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to zoom in. And this is where it just takes a little bit of a little bit of TLC, but it's not too, too difficult. We'll go ahead and set our brush tool to the blend mode soft light. All right. And use your bracket keys to make the brush larger or smaller. I'm working with a very soft edge brush. And I'm painting with my foreground color set to black, as you can see. And then I'm just going to paint over her hand. Now, because I have this set to soft light, it's going to kind of automatically constrain my brush to just these, you know, areas that are already darker. Make my brush smaller and really get in there and make sure none of her fingernails or anything are see-through. Great. I can do the same thing here with the edge of her shirt. I'm just looking to really lock down the edges because everything in the middle I could just grab with, you know, like the polygonal lasso tool or a lasso tool and, and clean that up and make it solid, right? All this kind of like little specky stuff, we can clean all that up in just a little bit. I'm just looking to like go around the edge of her suitcase, right? Get all that stuff. Her shoes are going to be a little tricky because the laces are very white and so is that rubber. We might have to just kind of do some of that manually and that's fine. Again, her, well, really, I sh honestly shouldn't pay that much attention to her shoes because her shoes are going to be in the basket and we're not even going to see them. So here again with her hand, I can go through and just very easily, you can see just how easily that edge cleans right up so nicely. Her hair, I'm, I don't want to make this solid black because if I start to make it too solid black, what's going to happen is we're going to carry a little bit of the background color with us and then that's going to kind of look fake. So I'm going to come along her jawline here. I'll darken it as much as I can without bringing back the background. Same thing with the hat. The hat's going to be a little tricky because there are so many little tiny highlights on it, but we'll get what we can get and we'll be content with that and then we'll adjust manually in just a little bit. All right, she looks, she looks like a mess, I'll be honest. Um, but then what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom out. And at this point, now that I have my edges kind of on blast, I'm going to switch my brush back to the normal blend mode. I'm going to right click. I don't want it to be like 0% hardness. We'll go with like a 75-ish percent hardness. And we can just begin painting in, you know, stuff like the shoes and, and everything else. So I'll probably speed the video up through this part where I, where I just paint in this stuff. And you can see, especially if you have a Wacom tablet or something, this would go very, very quickly. And I'm really not concerned with some of the areas of the photo too much because, well, something like her shoes, for instance, that is going to be covered by the basket 
uh, on the bottom of the hot air balloon. We really only need to be very concerned with her selection from like her waist or maybe even her chest upward. And just like that, we have the selection that we need. Well, or so we think, because now is sort of the moment of truth. I know there's still the shadow we have to clean up. I'll show you how easy that is in a second. We're going to invert this channel by hitting Commander Control I, and we can see, yeah, so most of the background is solid black, but we do need to clear up this stuff so we don't select any of that. Once more, we'll set our brush to the soft light blend mode. Once more, of course, we're painting with black. And I'm just going to come through here, and I'm going to paint the stuff closest to her. I may have to paint it with a couple passes just to make sure that it's solid black. No worries. I can do that. No big deal. And then we can go over the rest of the background. Really, if you're not close to an edge of the selection that you're actually trying to make, the, the brush doesn't need to be in soft light blend mode. You can just go to normal and you'll have to paint less passes. But now if we turn the composite RGB channel on, we can see we've got this beautiful little selection around her. And it really was rather painless to do. We didn't need to worry about losing any edges or messing anything up. As a side note, this could be a great alternative to Select and Mask if you are just at your wit's end with Select and Mask and cannot make it work for you. So we're going to Command or Control click on our Greens Copy or Green Copy channel, go back to our Layers panel, and what we'll do is we'll just drop a layer mask onto her, knock away the background. You can see we are preserving that hair back there and knocking away the entire background. Great. Let's jump over to the balloons. Actually, let me drag her over to the balloon document. So drag her up onto the tab, drop her into here, and I'm going to position her... She's, I don't know, she doesn't look like she's a teenager, so she's probably 9 or 10 years old, so standing at the edge of the balloon, it's probably at least going to be up to like the middle of her chest here. So I'm going to kind of align her or set her in the balloon appropriately, kind of like that. It looks super duper fake right now. Why? Well, because she would be falling, not floating and enjoying a good time in the balloon if she's on the outside of the basket. So we need to get a selection of the basket here. Now, we could just kind of cheat here and grab quick selection and see how that does for us, and that's not too bad, but in sticking with the theme of working with channels, I want to try to use a channel to do this, so I'm going to go to my channels panel, and I'm just going to look for something that has contrast. The basket can be either super bright or super dark, just as long as it sticks out away from the background. See, once again, green has great contrast. Blue is even better. So we're going to go with blue. I'm going to drag this down to the new channel icon. And really, I don't need to even care about anything other than the front edge of this basket and probably this like little stanchion post thing here. So I'm going to hit Commander Control L once again. Let's boost the blacks. And now part of, part of the problem we're going to have is this backside of the balloon here is going to become part of our mask. So we're going to have to manually paint that in probably no matter what. But as long as we know we have to do it, it's not going to blindside us. So I'm going to boost this up. I'm going to boost the whites. I'm just looking to get a nice clean selection here. Something like that. And I can hit OK. And then, of course, I can come through with my brush set to the soft light blend mode. And honestly, as I'm sitting here and looking at this and thinking about it, this none of this is probably even all that necessary because I think all of the really important stuff we're going to have to just kind of manually mask with her anyway. But you know what? In sticking with the program, we're just going to roll with this. And we can paint the front of the basket here black. We really don't need to worry about anything else in the basket or around the basket. Maybe I'll paint the sky back here solid white um, just to make sure that we have good contrast, just in case we decide to move her around a little bit here in the basket. Something like that. We get decent contrast. So that would be solid white. And then come back to this kind of stanchion post thing here and paint that solid black. And then get a little bit of white on the outside of it once more. Something kind of like that. The only part of the selection we're interested in is right here. In fact, I'm going to paint with, whoop, wrong document, wrong document. Let's set this to a normal blend mode. And I'm just going to gently paint in and just wipe away some of that mess right there. All right, cool. So I will invert this Commander Control I. Again, this white area is the only thing I'm really interested in. And I'm going to turn on my composite channel. I'm going to go back to my layers panel here. We can turn her back on and we want to work with the mask. So I'm going to go back to my channels panel. I'm going to load this blue copy channel as a selection. Notice that her mask that we created shows up in the channels panel as well. And we're not creating a mask. You want to create your mask before you load the selection. Otherwise, you're going to get this crazy, weird, really complex mask. We just want to use our selection um, to go ahead and paint away the bits of her that we don't want to see. So once more, my mode is set to the normal blend mode. And I can just paint with black and make this whole bottom portion of her disappear. Now, you can see, obviously, there are going to be some issues because right in here, we need to paint all of that by hand. And that's where, when I said we probably this mask is kind of unnecessary or the channel is unnecessary. That's kind of what I was talking about. So I'm going to deselect. I'm going to make sure none of her is showing down here. So I'm going to paint with black a little bit down there to make sure it's all covered up. And then we'll zoom in. And first and foremost, we'll get rid of the vertical bit here. So I'll grab my brush tool once more, use my angle or my, my square brackets, excuse me, and just uh, paint away. I'm painting with black. I can see my edge now. So now I'll paint with white and I'll bring that back in just to the edge. 
just as it would look if she was actually factually standing there. Just like that. Whoop, I don't want to I don't want to show that teal color background behind her. There we go. And then of course we will paint this away here. So we can see the edge of the balloon. And just to the point where you can see the back edge of the balloon. There we go. And the basket in this case. So now we'll go through and we'll paint this back in. Right? And it can be as as rough or precise as you want it to be. Uh, but precision is always nice, right? Nobody complained that something was too precise unless it took too long. And we'll go ahead and paint, 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 paint. And just like that, we have her now standing in the basket. Now, the last step to add just a little bit more realism would be to go ahead and create a new layer. And we would go edit, fill. Where's fill? Edit, fill. There we go. And I'm going to choose to fill this with 50% gray. We would set this to a blend mode of like soft light. And then we would grab our burn tool over here, the little hand a little burn tool, and a range mid-tones exposure 50%. I'm going to zoom in on her, and we'll just kind of manually paint in a big old shadow here. And don't worry, we are painting it on the balloon as well. I'll show you how to fix that in just a second, just like that. And all we need to do is duplicate this layer mask up to layer 2. Hold that alter option, drag it up to that layer, boom. And you can see we now have that little that little shadow in there on her. And it's a little too strong, so we can reduce the opacity just a touch. And just like that, we have this nice little shadow on her. And maybe last but not least, just to help match the toning a little bit, we could throw a curves adjustment on here, boost the black point a little bit, and drop the white point a little bit to reduce contrast. We'll throw a color lookup table adjustment on here. We'll use the teal orange plus contrast LUT and probably reduce both of these layers by shift clicking them just reduce them both to like 50 percent opacity or something like that you can see there's before there's after it'll just help blend those colors a little bit more so we took this normal image and we composited in this little girl who was standing in the balloon having the absolute stinking time of her life and yes there you have it that is indeed the finished effect for that a little bit of color grading never hurt there right at the end, did it? If you enjoyed this tutorial, again, make sure you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any Photoshop tutorials uh, to come. If, you, if you're into Discord, make sure you join our little Discord server. That's cool. And if you really enjoyed the video, I mean really enjoyed the video, consider picking up a copy of my Photoshop course. It's all about how to retouch images in Photoshop. I think you'll find some value there. It helps us do what we do here at TutVid, bringing the free Photoshop tutorials to the world. And with that out of the way, guys, I want to thank you once again for watching this tutorial, for messing around with channels, creating selections, adding to selections, and refining selections to create, well, first the color change, and then the girl standing in the balloon composite image. For all of that and more, that's it. Get it, got it, good. Nathaniel Dodds and Tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one. And before you go, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more great tutorials every day. Also, buy my course. It helps us do what we do, and this channel is supported by viewers just like you. You can also just click the thumbnail and watch another video from this channel. See you next time, guys.